Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Review Manager. Tracking reviews for any business will never be the same with this incredible Review Manager. I'm going to show you how to track reviews, track replies, automatically filter just based on a click, and we're going to show you how to create this mini dashboard with Slicer. It's going to be an incredible training. I hope you'll join us. So let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining us. The idea for this week came in from a suggestion from Bev. Bev had requested that we track reviews for multiple businesses and perhaps different platforms and also track replies. That's just what we're going to do. So thank you, Bev, for that suggestion. Keep your suggestions coming in, whether it's email or YouTube comments. In fact, YouTube, if you are on that platform, go ahead and click the subscribe and the like button. Of course, don't forget that notification icon bell. That'll ensure that you get these trainings each and every week. I bring these to you almost every Tuesday. We're going to be going to every other week. That way I can create more amazing courses for you so i'm going to be doing that and of course even better applications all right we're going to get started right away just wanted to mention if you do want to support this channel there are a number of ways to do that one of them is with our patreon platform if you like these applications but you want something added something fixed or you want me to focus on something we're doing all that on patreon so i hope you'll join us there to get your feature fix or focus every time we create these applications i do another training with another updated application there and i also provide pdf uh, downloads that allow you to track the code of these applications and of course you are also welcome to download the entire training the video training and of course we have lots of resources such as the icons and pictures and backgrounds that go along with these trainings so i would appreciate your support there i'll include the link down below that is excel for freelancers patreon platform all right let's get started on this training this week i've got a really cool training because we're going to be able to automatically download ratings on the click of a button we're going to be able to add any type of business that we want so we've got some business ids we're going to be able to we're going to start with yelp but eventually you can add additional platforms on here to download reviews so i've got places for that We've got a database, so it's a relatively simple particular application with not a whole lot of code. So this is not going to be a very long training uh, because it's relatively straightforward. We do have some very, very cool filtering techniques that we're going to be used, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we've got a very compact filter. We'll be able to show replies, whether the replies are replied, both, or just not replied, right? Both of that we're going to be have. We also have the ability to reply after if we want to reply after a certain date. So we can put in a certain date and only those replies, only those uh, reviews that are after that date. Also, we can uh, also show ratings above if we have uh, two four stars or we only want to show ratings that are above four star or five star. We can do that here as well. So it can show you that. So we've got a lot of features on that. And of course, we can change the business of it. So there's a lot of opportunities opportunity here that business of course has only five stars this one only has four so if we want to show all the stars or ratings below maybe we want to show only ratings below a certain star we can do that too so we've got a dynamic filter that we're going to be able to show here so it's going to be a really great training on that we're going to be able to select different businesses we'll be able to track all of that so all we need to do in fact we're going to start out with yelp all we need to do get the business information is just to do that so it's very very easy to add a business so we're going to show you that right now so what we're going to do is i'm going to go into yelp yelp is one of the best particular designs for app websites for this type of reviews right now lots of others have it we've got facebook and you've got a few trust pilot and a few others that also do it but we'll just try this so let's take this new york pizza right this looks like a pretty good restaurant and it's making me kind of hungry for yelp what we want to do is we want to get the business id so that's the most important thing that business id is critical so that business id is right before the question mark here so what i'm going to look for is new york roma so i'm just going to copy that right Control c and i'm going to go into my application here and then i'm just going to paste that down right here and then i'm just going to add a, a nickname for it so that'll allow us especially in the graphs and things like that okay so i'm going to go into the reviews here and I'm going to select that review right here. So that one we just added right here, that business. And I'm going to click Get Reviews from Yelp. All right, so I'm going to click that. It's going to get those reviews. And it's going to import three reviews have been added. That's the limit we've set. So if I go ahead and click down here, it's going to show those reviews. Of course, we want to show any star. So let's just go ahead and click Show Replies. And then I'll just do both. So that way it's going to have. So now we see we've got one five star, 
one two star and one four star so automatically those reviews got downloaded we've got the links if we want to go to the review i can go directly to that review and click on that review and it's going to show up here so we can see the review here and it's going to scroll down down to the reviews section there and we can see those reviews okay so it automatically will open up that particular review so it's a great way and if we want to reply we can just reply very much at least we can track the replies here eventually we'll be able to upload it but this will at least allow us to track the replies once we reply here we would also do that on the website this is simply a way to track the reply that we've already replied so we would reply directly on the website and then just copy and paste that here that way we know we've replied it and of course if we filter that again we see that there's a check mark and that means that has been replied so that's a great 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 way to track that we can get reviews from additional but i've just started with yelp but we could eventually do business google business facebook trust and i'll kind of give you an idea of what that would be like however that's a little bit different okay so let's get started right away on this what i want to do is i want to show you that first thing how do we get the reviews from yelp right so from this business name it's relatively straightforward we're going to use something called make actually it's formerly called integra mat integra mat but it's also called make we're just going to use the the one called integra mat now this is integra mat it's very very simple here it's a dashboard now remember let's uh let's uh, save those changes in case i made any changes now what i want to do is we're going to go into this called integra mat now it's also called make right so you can see upgrade for make for free a lot of people are using the new version called make it's almost the same but i'm just using the old version because that's where my account lies for now and i'm lazy to upgrade so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new scenario so you go into scenario and you create a brand new scenario so it wants me to upgrade to make it's saying keep earning a make so what i've done is i've just created one already so if i create a new one what we're going to be doing is we want to send information we want to send information to this and we want that information to be processed so we created a, a basically a scenario like this and i'll show you how we would do that but basically we're going to create a scenario called a webhook and that's going to let us send information basically all i want to do is i want to send this business information i want to send it to yelp and i want to tell it how many reviews to get and then what i want to do is i wanted to download those reviews and then i want to bring those reviews and put them in this database right here so we see this new york pizza right we've got those these three reviews each review comes with a review id a link the text the actual text for that link a rating the date and time the review and then we're going to add in the platform the business and if there was a reply and then a row associated from that and i'll show you explain this one a little bit later and this one okay so that's what we're going to do that's the information we want so what we want to do is we want to send that to integramat so we're going to create something called a web hook and that if you want we're to create a new scenario and we've been this way before but if you want to create a new scenario we'll just click create new scenario here once you get signed up you get about a thousand free operations so into integramat or make either one 1,000 free operations. We're not going to use that many today. And what we'll do is we'll just click on add here, or you can click add here. We'll click here. And then we're going to search for a web hook. We want a web hook and we're going to be sending. So once we scroll down here all the way down, we'll see that web hook. This is the one we want. And what we want to do is we want to call it custom web hook. Custom web hook. That's what we want. So basically, we want to send information. What that's going to do is going to give us, we can just click add and we can create anything we want. So it's, we'll just call it test we can call it reviews okay and then there's no ip restrictions and then we're going to save it once that happens it's going to assign us this webhook we're going to copy that at rest and we're going to add that to our code in actuality i've left a place for that so we can do that here because we're going to eventually have different here so what we can do is we can actually place that code that webhook right in here i'm not going to change the one i have but so we're going to place that right here because this yelp is going to use this webhook now if it was google business or facebook or another type we would add a different type of a webhook for that because that webhook is going to be dynamic i don't have any businesses yelp allows us to look up any business which is really nice google business allows you to only look up your own business i don't have a business on on google business or facebook or trustpilot but we can add the code for that at a later time or we can have that you can have that customized or you can do it and i'll go over the steps of course a little bit on that so basically after we create this webhook we're going to add that directly in here our code of course is going to take that our code will pick up this webhook so we'll place that web webhook directly in there okay so once we have that we can then i'll show you in the code in just a moment so then what we want to do is we want to send that information where do we want to send it well i want to send it to yelp so i'm going to click add another module and i'm just going to click yelp okay and then what it's going to do is going to find that yelp 
and then what we can do is just gonna click here Yelp beta and what we want is we want the business details or we can list the business reviews right so really we're just focused on the business reviews now if this looks familiar we did create a business directory in an old training where we did extract some of the reviews for that but this is a little bit different training so what this is asking for is a business ID and a locale a locale is just simply the, the country that we want so of course you will do United States because that's the one we're having so also once we select the locale on that we also want the business id now we need to know that business id now that business id is this and whatever business we're looking up that business id can be found directly in here so we see that the business id is right here just like this if we click on the business it's everything like that that's all we need and that's the same information that we place directly in here so when we select a business all i need is get that business id so that's pretty much all we need. We also want to set the number of reviews that we want to download. So if we take a look inside here, right, the next one is the limit of 10. So we set that three. Then what I want to do is I want to parse that information. It comes, it comes in a, like an array, right? So I want to uh, parse that. Basically, it comes in like in just a big colluded group. Let's, let me show you what that will look like when it comes in. It looks something like this. Let's bring that down here it looks something like this so it's a big big mess of data and that's really not going to help us right but we can use integramat to help us parse that data and to make it workable right so basically what's going to return is all this and so what we're going to do is we want to bring it in we want to separate it in because we don't want this bunch of data the bunch of data is fine however we do want some separations in there so what we're going to be doing to that is adding something additional and let's go into the one i've created so that you can see we can go step by step this is the one that i've created already and so all i've done is do the same thing i've added that webhook i've added the yelp if we take a look on here we see that we have the business id now we're going to send over this information from the webhook and i'll show you how to get this label this business id label and i set the limit to three in the united states and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a use a table aggregator and what that's going to do is going to help us separate all the information that comes to through yelp it's going to be in an array but i want to aggregate that in a form that excel can understand so that we can take it apart with the vba code and we can separate those columns and we can separate those rows into nice data so that's exactly what we're going to do so once we get the information once you send the information and i'll show you how to send that right what information do we want to get from yelp well we want the review id we want the url we want the text of the review right certainly with the rate i want to know the rating is it one two three four five star and i want to know the time that was created i don't necessarily need to know the user now what we want to do is i want to separate that right i want to separate the columns right as we add it if we take a look inside our data right we're downloading a lot of data here i want to separate the review id the link i need to separate i need to know where this data starts and where this and where this is so we need to separate those columns and then i also need to separate the rows here so this can help us do just that so let's take a look inside here so i'm going to use this as our column separator backslash c backslash and then i need a, a separator for our row now it's we can use a new row a tab but i'm going to use a very special character very specific then i want a row separator right because i need to know if there's how many different rows of data there are we don't know how what it's going to return so i'm going to separate the rows by this backslash r backslash okay so that's all we have to do that's it nothing else there and just click okay now if you want to know where to get this table aggregator all you do is click on this purple and take a look down here and it's this table aggregator so all you need to do is just drag it up into here and there's your table aggregator right we don't need two of them but that would be how you do it just drag it up there right from here then the last thing is i need to get the information that this aggregates all that information i need to get it back into excel and we can do that with the webhook response now the webhook response all we need to do is click on one click webhooks and then just click webhook response that's all we have to do relatively simple that webhook response is going to come directly from this aggregator here so we click on that we look at the options right we want we don't want the business id we don't want the json text we want this text directly from here that's coming from this table aggregator we want to drag that all we just need to do is drag it in there and then it's there for that or we can just double click it okay so what that's going to do is going to get us inside that response right so that we have all that information once we get all that information in a response in vba we can then take it apart using vba and put it in the appropriate columns 
and the appropriate rows. And if you want to check it, you click run once and it'll run, or you just turn it on and it'll run automatically. If you want to know what has already run, just go here and let's we can discard changes. I didn't make any change. Go into the history and you see the list of all the runs. Now, if we take a look at the ones that I just went through, click on the details here and let's take a look at this so we see exactly what happened. Inside the webhook here, right, I sent some information. What did I send? I sent the business ID, New York Roma. So that's all I sent, the business ID here. So let's take a look inside here. What got received? The input, the business ID, here's what got received. We want a limit of three and we have the locale. So that's all what got received. Now, what was the output? The output is all of this. So this is what we have to make some sense of. So we got bundle one, we got the review ID, we got the URL, we got the text, we got the rating and we got the time created here. Okay. And then we also have the user, which we didn't get the users another one. So we didn't need this because this is in another array. So I just left the user blank and the total number of bundles. This is the three and the order position. Okay. So we got another, so bundle means review bundle. So we got three different reviews. This is everything we got. So this is the output, right? So then we went over to the tools, right? And we got this input. So the input is exactly the same as what the output is. Here's that. Here's all the input, the same as what it is before. And what is the output? The output is one bundle of text, but that bundle of text is separated. So we've got the ID here, and I'll show. Let me show you this in a little bit larger form. And it is this right here. So this is the output that got output, right? I just have it in a text file just so we can see it. So we have that first ID here, that first ID. Then it's separated by a C. So if I hit enter, and we see enter here it's a little bit easier to separate it right then okay so then we have the link if we take a look at the end of the link we've got another uh backslash c right here and what i let's bring that down here and let's hit enter so if i hit enter there then we have the review text here and here's the review text so here's the review text and then again once the review text is done then we have another column separator then we have the review itself here's the five then we also have the date stamp let's take a look at the date stamp now the date stamp is going to we're going to have to work with that so it says monday july 18th 2022 11 15 we got all this right so that's not going to be helpful for excel so we'll have to work with that a little bit and i'll show you how to do that so that's the date right and actually universal time this is we need to go back here so this is here let's go back so universal time so this is everything that we have here and then once we get to the r that's a brand new row so we take a look at this here here so this r means a brand new row starting so then again we have another business id and it goes on for three different times so this is what i want to do i want to take all of this the business id the link the text the rating and the time and put that into the first row. Uh, but first I wanna check, does it exist yet? I wanna check this ID and I wanna look directly inside our table. Does it exist yet? If it doesn't exist, then add it. If it does, then ignore it. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do right here. So once we have all that parsed information, VBA is gonna take on the rest and let us know exactly how we're able to fill that in. So that's all we need to do. So this is gonna help me. So that response is gonna be in one big text file. All we need to do is just separate that text file into all these different parts and then just put it in the table. And I'm gonna show you how to do that inside an array and we're gonna use a split. Okay, so let's get into the VBA and all of that happens when we click this button, right? We know it's gonna be Yelp and we know it's going to be this business. So that's what we're gonna get reviews. If I try to get reviews again, we've already got all three of the reviews. So nothing has been, we've got the three last reviews already. So nothing's going to be added, which is correct, right? I don't wanna keep adding and duplicating them again and again. All right, so let's take a look inside the code and see exactly how we created this. Now, if we take a look at the macro that assigned, clicking assign macro, we see it's a macro called download reviews. And when I edit it, it's gonna open up our VBA editor. It's gonna go into this module called get review macros. It's not a very long macro. We've compiled it and it's very, very compressed and optimized. So it's called download reviews. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is to mention the object HTTP as an object. We need several strings. The URL, we need to build out that URL. I need a JSON as a string. 
I need that response. That response is going to go that big, all that text and go into response. I need the hook string. That hook string is very important because that's going to be the string that starts out right here. That string, we're going to have to pull that depending upon the type of platform that we are using to extract it. We are also going to need the business ID. I need to look for that to see if it's been found. So we're going to put that in there. And I also need to know the review ID. The view ID is going to be important. So that business ID and the review ID. The business ID is what we're going to be putting in the string. Okay, I also need to create several arrays. The review array is a string, it's gonna be a review, and I need to know the review data. Once that data gets in, we're gonna split it into multiple strings. We're gonna use the same thing in the review data array as a string. I need to know what column we're putting that review in, I also need to know what row we're putting that in. And I also wanna keep track of how many reviews we're tracking. Have we added one, two, three, or four? How many reviews have we added? So I need to keep track of that as a review number. And what is the total number of reviews that got downloaded? I also need to know if it's been found. That review has been found. I need to know what row it is. And I want to keep track of the count. Okay, we may have multiple ones. So we're going to focus on the platform review as long. So that platform review as long, right? So I want to know the platform row as long. Okay, so which platform, right? It's very important, right? We may be using Yelp. I want to keep track of the row there. So if it's Yelp, I know to use this webhook. If it's Google Business, use this webhook. All right, so let's continue on with the code. Okay, so we need to know the row. All right, so the first thing what I want to do is we're going to focus on the reviews, right? If the reviews B2 is empty, why is B2 important? Let's go ahead and take a look inside some hidden columns and see what we have. We don't have too much, but let's just a few items. So the first thing what I want to know is I want to know the row that's associated with the platform, Yelp, right? I want to know that Yelp is on row four here because it's important because I have to extract the webhook very specifically used for this Yelp platform. To do that, all we do is create a named range. Let's go ahead and view these, and we can also view the formula bar, and we'll view the headings to help us out. Okay, so first thing what I want to do is I want to create some named ranges. So we're going to go into the formulas, and we're going to go into name ranges. We're going to see a few formulas that got created. The first one's called platforms. If we tab over, over, we see that we have inside our admin, we're using offset, and we've got a named range for all of the platforms that we have here. And that's just basically using the offset. So that's going to create a dynamic range, name range. We also have another one for businesses. If we take a look here, we see we have the business ID here. And I also have the business nickname here, the nickname used for the business. The business nickname are going to come very, very helpful when we use our dashboard, right? Because I don't want these long IDs. I want the business nicknames to be used inside our dashboard. Great. All right. So let's take a look inside here. We have one for review database. And, and review ID. So that's the last one I really wanted to show you. We've got an ID, a dynamic named range for all the review IDs inside the review database. So that's it. So what I want to do is once we change this, right, if we change it to Google Business or whatever, I want to make sure that I know that I've got the row that is associated with that. And it's just simple. We wrap it around if error. We're going to match whatever the user has put in M2. We want to get it based on the platforms, and we're going to add three. And the reason we add three is because the first one starts on row four, and I'm looking for that row number. If I know the row number, then I know that an E and the row number is where our webhook is going to be placed for that particular platform. So I want to make sure certainly that B2 contains a value. If it doesn't, how am I going to be able to extract that webhook, right? It's a dynamic webhook based on the platform used. Okay, so I want to make sure if not, we're going to still select the platform to get the reviews from. And I'm going to put that into a variable called platform row. That's going to be based on B2. And I also want to extract that hook string into a string variable. And of course, it's going to come from the admin E in the platform row. Just as I had mentioned, it's coming directly from E and the platform row. So I'm going to put that entire string right here. This is Remember, this is the exact same string that we pulled directly from this webhook here. Let's go back to the diagram here. And we're going to put that as the right one here inside this diagram. And we just want to copy the address. Notice that that platform, it ends in EK5, right? So it is the same one that we're using inside here. So ending in EK5, that's the same one. Okay, so continuing on. So we want to make sure that we have that. If the hook string is empty for any reason, please let the user know to add a webhook in the admin to get the reviews, right? We need that webhook to extract that. I also want to get the business ID. The business ID is very critical. That business ID is located directly right here inside I2. 
If that is empty, we should certainly let the user know that please select a business to get the reviews. That can't be empty. We need to have a business if we're going to extract the reviews for that. Once we have all that information, we are ready to build our link and we are ready to send that information. So we're going to set that object HTTP to create the object MSX ML2 server. And basically what that's going to do is just send, allow us to send information over the website using this hook. So we're going to build that URL. I want to send the hook string, that string. And I also want to send the business ID. And I want to give that a very specific name called business ID. That is the same name. Business ID is the same exact name. When it comes across over, you're going to see it directly in here. Let's see if we take a look inside a separator here. Let's take a look inside here. It's the same one that you saw right here, business ID. So that's what I want to send information over, right? Whatever we sent over, going to send up. Okay, so the business ID, and this is the actual value, and this is the label that we're going to use. The labels go from and, and then equals, and then the business ID after that, the actual value. That's all we need to send. Simply just send the hook string, which is the webhook, and the business ID. So we're going to open. Get, get the URL. We're going to send that URL. Then we're going to send the request. Our header types are basically just very basic with content type and then application JSON. Then we're going to actually send that information. And then what we would use, we're going to get that response. Remember, that response is going to come directly inside here. That response is going to come right here. This is what we're looking for. And we're getting that text. That text, again, is going to look exactly like it does here. So that text, all that text is going to get in one single variable, and that variable is called a response. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have a correct response. If for some reason inside that response it includes the word failed, then we know it has not or it happened. Or maybe the word accepted. If it's accepted, maybe that means that your it is not turned on or not running or something. Or the response equals empty, then we know that there's an issue. So for any of those types of responses, I want to let the user know to please make sure to add a correct webhook. And of course, check all the settings. We're going to exit the sub out of it, right? We don't have a correct response. But if we do have a correct response, then we can continue on. First, I want to do is I want to get that first available review row. Inside our review database here, that first available row using A and Excel up plus one, it's going to get us that first available row. I'm going to put that into a variable. And that variable is going to be called review row or REV row right here. That's the first available row. Then what I want to do is I want to determine how many rows there are, right? I need to know how many rows. So to get the what, what we're going to do is we're going to put that in an array. And I'm going to split that entire text by the number of R's, right? If we take a look at this, that the backslash R backslash, that is the separator that we use. That's the separator that we're using right here. So this separates the rows. As you can see, there's there's two in this, right? So that means there's three different ones. So if we know that there's two in our response here, if there's two different separators of rows, we know that there's three different uh, rows of information, right? Two R's here. And you would see in this one, we would see the second one would be right up here, right after the time. So so here's the second one here. So we know that in this case, there's three different reviews that we're going to have to parse simply by counting the R's. So we're going to take a look inside that and then we're going to determine that. So once we have that, we're going to count that. I want to split that response by the R's and I want to put the quantity is the quantity is the revert quantity U bound, the upper bound review array. So this is going to get us the quantity. Actually, the quantity in this case would be two. But if we're starting at zero, arrays always start at zero. Zero, one, and two is actually three. Remember, so this will be two, but we always start at zero. We're starting at zero in our loop going to two. So that's actually three, right? Zero to two is the same as one to three. Three, still three down. So once we have that quantity, we're going to extract. In this case, it would be two, because the upper bound, the upper bound, U bound of that array is the limit. What is the highest number of that array? Right, the highest number is two. The lowest one is zero. The middle one is one. So this is going to be two. Right, this is the upper bound number of the array, bound number of the array. All right, so once we have that, we're going to focus directly on that review database. We're going to set the review count as zero. This sets the initial count of the number of reviews to zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the reviews. So we're starting at zero. We're, the reason we're starting at zero now is because the arrays start at zero. So we want it to be equal to the arrays. An array always starts the, their count at zero, then goes to one, and then goes to two, or however many you have. So it's going to be count from zero to two. And we're going to extract that data. The first thing what I want to do is I want to get the review data. All of the data inside that first review is going to be review array 
and then the first one's going to be zero. So what does that mean? That's all of the data inside that array. That would be everything here. So all of this data is going to be inside a single string, all this data inside a single string, maybe not the R. So once I have it all in a single string, I need to separate it again by the columns, by the columns. So that's the next step. So we have all the data for a single review in one string. And then I want to separate it into another array called review data array. How am I going to separate that? Well, I'm going to use the split function. And that split function is going to be separated by the column. So I need to split it once again, this time by the individual columns, otherwise known as the backslash C backslash. Then we're going to split that review data so we can separate it into individual columns. And But before I, I actually put it in the database, I want to check to see if it exists. How do I know that? Well, the review ID is very unique. That review ID is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the first item and extract that. The first item is right here. And this is be this first item right here. This is the review ID. So this particular one is going to be the first item inside our array right here. So to get that, I need to put that inside a variable and check to see if it exists. So that review ID is going to go into a string variable. It's called the review data and is the first one. Remember, arrays start in zero. So we want to get the first item in our array, meaning zero, and that's going to get the review ID. So what I want to do is I want to check to see if it exists in the table. If it doesn't exist, it could create an error. So therefore, we're going to wrap it in on air, resume next, and on air go to zero. I'm going to set the row. I want to determine if there's a row found. So to do that, we've already inside the review database, dot range, we have a named range that is a dynamic named range for our reviews ID. So I'm going to look inside this named range and I'm going to look for the review ID. I'm going to look inside the values and I'm going to look whole and I want to extract the row number. If that row number is found, it would not be zero and that means it exists already. If it has not been found, it'll be zero. So if the found row does not equal zero, then we know we can add it, right? So that's all we have to do. If it does not equal zero, that means it's been found already. We don't want to add it if it's been found already. So we can simply skip it. What this is going to do is going to skip everything else and it's going to go right down here to next review. However, if the found row equals zero, that means it has not been found yet and we do want to add it. We're going to be adding five different columns. So the columns are going to go from one to five inside our database. Right, column one, two, three, four, and five. I want to add that time in there. Now I want to add all of that data inside there. So to do that, what we're going to do is, but I want to know if the column equals five, I want to do something different. Let's take a look inside this data. I want to, I want to focus on this particular time. This is the time that was returned to this, and this is really not going to be helpful. If the column equals five, one, two, three, four is the review, five is the time, but I want to, I want to put this in at a time that Excel can read. What I really want to do is I want to get rid of this here and I'd like to get rid of this here too. I just want to extract July 18th and even with that we're going to have to do something with it in order to get Excel to read it. But I want to get rid of this right. I want to get rid of this here and I just want to have the, the part July 18th, 22. I really want to have that. So we need to do something a little bit in the code. We need to do some work in a code and we need to do a formula. If the, if the review column equals five, then do this, meaning it's the time column. Let's just put the, let's call this the time column. Otherwise, all other columns are here. If it's all other columns, all we need to do is just place that in a database all other columns okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take cells we're already in the database the review row the review column we're already looping through the columns 1 to 5 the value of this cell is simply going to equal the review data array and the column minus one why do we have to subtract one remember our first value inside an array is zero right so if we're starting off at column one i really want when it comes to the array i want zero so starting in column one minus one is zero so that's the first one so Column one is actually to array number item zero. Okay, so that's a code. However, what if it is a time? If it's a time, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this part right here. This one called coordinated universal time. I want to get rid of that. And I want to get rid of all of this here, right? I just want to replace that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the replace. In fact, I'm going to use two replace. I want the first one, I want to get rid of this. I'm going to take this here and I'm going to replace it with nothing. So we're going to take we're taking the data here, this specific data. Here's the data that's coming in the array. I'm going to look for this here, this 
GMT, and I'm gonna replace it with nothing. Then I also want to remember, I said I also want to get rid of this Monday, this, these first four characters. July 18th, 2022 is all I need, right? I don't need the Monday, I wanna get rid of that. So what we're gonna do is I wanna get rid of the first four characters. So to do that, we're also going to take the left of the review data, the left of the data here, and I wanna take the first four characters of that, the left, and I wanna replace it with nothing. So we're gonna take the first four characters and replace it with nothing. So it's gonna get rid of two things. It's gonna get rid of the first four characters and it's gonna get rid of this, right? And that's gonna leave us with that time. And it's gonna put that time directly inside there. We still have to work with it because Excel won't recognize this as a time, but it's a good start. And then the formula will take care of this. So all we're doing basically is taking this information, we're getting rid of what's to the right of it, we're getting what's what's to the left of it, and we're just putting this in the cell. And so that's it, that's all we have to do, at least to get to the data into this point. Then what I want to do is that's gonna get us that time, but that time here, if we take a look at this time here, I'm gonna copy this time here. I'm gonna put that into a cell here, just so we can see. This is not going to be recognized. Here's the time field. So this here is not going to be recognized by Excel, right? If we take a look at this home, and I, and I change it to a general format, if I look, look, it's not a date. I know, how do I know it's not a date? I know it's not a date because it, changing a date to general format should automatically change. If I change this one to a general format, look, it changes to the time, the date here, which is here, and the time, which is here. That's the, that's the general format of that. Right? So let me undo that. Okay, so we know just by look, although it looks fine, right? But we know that this is not recognized as a date. So I need it to be recognized as a date. That's very important. So how do we do that? Well, I can do that with a formula. And I've created a formula here, look at this. I've created a formula here, and that formula is gonna, gonna appear here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this formula here, and I'm gonna copy it, use VBA to copy it. It copied automatically down because of the table structure here. But I wanna take this formula here and I wanna paste it down here. Once I have it in this date format, this formula will automatically create it. If we go into the time and date, right? If I change the number format, let's copy this here. Uh, let's just change the date. If I go into the more number formats and I go into, let's say date, and then I choose one with both date and time, we can see that it is actually properly formatted. July 18th, 11, 19 a.m. That's exactly what I want, right? But it is the formula that's gonna help us out. Let's go ahead and go into that formula. So this formula here, right here, this one right here, is the same formula that's up here. So all I need to do is simply copy this formula down all the way here, and then I'm just gonna take whatever value is here and just place it directly here instead. In other words, I'm taking the value that the formula created and I'm gonna place it directly here. Then I have the correct date in the right place, right? And a properly formatted date. So to do that here, we're gonna take the date value. The first thing what I wanna do is I wanna take July, J-U-L, and I wanna turn it into a month number, right? So to do that, we're gonna take the left the left part, E22, and E22, the third, because it's always gonna be the three characters for the month, and I wanna add a space. So once we add the date value in the left of that, that's gonna turn it into a month. Then what I wanna do is I wanna get the two digit day. I wanna, get, it's always gonna be two digits, right? Zero, one, zero, two, zero, three would be the first, third or fourth, whatever. It's always gonna be two digits. So then what I wanna use the mid function, and I wanna start out from E22, and I wanna go the fifth character, starting at the fifth, right? Fifth, we noticed that the first four days are the month plus, three days with the month plus the space, so the first one's gonna be the fifth spot, and I wanna just get two characters. That two characters is going to be our day, and I wanna add a comma, and I wanna add a space to that, so this is gonna turn it into the day, right? So I wanna add that day, I wanna extract those two days, and then I wanna use the mid once again. This time I want to extract the year, right? So how do I get the year? We're gonna use the mid, so we're gonna move a character starting at the eighth character, that's where our year starts, and I wanna extract four digits. Our year is always in a four. So this right here, when we add in the formula date value, will actually get us the date. Now all we need to do is get the time value. We're gonna add in, remember the date plus the time, we always add them too. The date in itself plus the time is going to give us, a, the time is always gonna be in a decimal format. That'll get us the both the time and the date. So how do we extract the time? Well, our time, we see that our time is always gonna be the number. We've got six digits of numbers and two digits of colon. So we know that we've got eight total digits. So all I need to do is take the right, 
the right of our of our string here, getting the eight digits and turning that into the time value. So I've got that. So that's going to get us the value of the time. Once I have that actual correct time, I can then replace it. So that's exactly what we're going to do inside the formula. So we're going to copy that, but I also want the business name. So I've got that formula right here. And I've got another formula for the business name. I want that nickname of the business to go here. I've got the business ID right here. The business ID is going to be right here. You see that the business ID, but I really want the business name because the business name is also going to, we can use that. If I put it in this table, I can use it that inside these, these nice uh, graphs here. So we can use that easily down here, having that nickname here. So what I want to do is I want a formula and that formula is going to be based on, we're going to index that business nickname and we're going to base it on the business that was entered in G2 or G column G. And we're going to want an exact match here. It's going to, we're going to look up a match using all the businesses. If there's an error, we're going to return empty. So when I take these and I copy these down, right, copy, and I paste these down here, paste in the formulas here, it's automatically going to paste in everything else we have. And it's going to, if they're already done, so we already have it. The reason it's not is because this is no longer a text, right? This is actual date, so there's an error here. So because this is an actual date, right? But if we paste it in here, which is not, this is a text, it's going to paste incorrectly. So that means if I, let's go ahead and do just the one that's copy that and paste it in, in right here, pasting those formulas in here, we see that we have that, but there's no business here. Of course, if we bring down the business, it will automatically track that business. Okay, great. So we see how that we can bring down that formula to extract both the correct date and time and the business ID. So the business ID will stay where it is. I'm going to take this particular text to date. I'm just going to copy that here. And I'm going to paste those values directly in here. As soon as I paste those values, of course, it's automatically, if it's formatted properly like it was before, will automatically set to that proper time and date. And that's exactly what I want right here. Okay, great. So we see how that does. And let's take a look inside the code. So we're going to copy those formulas. Those formulas are going to come directly from J2 and K2. And then I'm going to paste those formulas directly in J and the review row and K in the review row. So they get pasted directly in. Everything else just gets in added automatically. And we're going to take a look at that. So we've got column E that gets added. And let's bring this down here, bring it up here, and then we'll bring in the code. So we can see all both the data and the code at the same time. Okay, bringing it down here. And we can bring this up now. So we're going to go, of course, column E is going to be our date and time, bringing that in. And of course, we have our platform. We want to add in our platform, our business, and our reply. There's going to be no reply at this point. So we're going to take in E, of course. That is our date and time, right? Bringing that value in date. And let's do this date and time. The reason we're doing this is simply because we are going to automatically E equals J, right? I want to take that, whatever's, whatever the result of that form, and bring it directly into E, bringing that date and time. And we're going to clear the contents of J, right? I don't like to have formulas here if we don't need to, so we can clear the contents of that if we want to right here. Clearing the contents, clear that formula J in the row. Then what I want to do is I want to put in that platform Yelp, right? We don't necessarily need it. We're going to take, we can put in the dynamic platform if we want to, and that's going to be whatever the user has put put in here, which is going to be M2. So we can do that instead of actually that fixed formula. So we can do reviews dot range M2. So whatever the user has downloaded dot value. Okay. So that's the platform. And also we have the set the business, right? What's in G. We want that to come from I2, right? I want that business inside G. If we take a look here, I want the actual business that's going to come directly from I2, whatever business name was put in there. We'll put that. And lastly, we also want to make sure that we are going to set that row. I want to know the row that could be helpful moving forward. So we're going to put that row and that's going to be simply a formula. Okay. So we just do equals row if we have it but we're just going to delete and then the formula here so that's it so that's all we do but inside vba we're going to clear that row because we're not that's just a sample data so we can keep things accurate and of course we can bring up the table one row here so we don't have that okay great so we're going to have the row then what i want to do is i want to wrap the text equals false now this is important because i don't want the review to be all large so if we go into home and we wrap the text. I don't want this to happen, right? I want it to row. So by wrapping the text equals false, it'll make sure that row height stays consistent. Moving on, I want to set, I want to increment that review row. The review row equals review row plus one. And basically, if we just add a review, we're going to increment the review, review row to the next available row down there. So that is it. That's how we loop through the reviews. And then all we want to do is I want to re reload the re 
review list there simply just reloading that and perhaps one other thing that we can do if we add a new business just to be certain we want the right business we may want to add in the filter if we just create a new whatever business we've just added here we may want to put that business directly in e2 so we can do e2 equals i2 i think that could be kind of helpful so we can do reviews dot range e2 to dot value equals reviews dot range two and what that's going to do is whatever business dot value it will automatically load up okay that's going to be helpful and then we just want to let the user know how many particular reviews got added so that's why we're keeping track of that review count that review count gets added here also incremented and as soon as we let the user know the review count reviews have been added that is it for the sub that's all we need to do to create this particular and download these reviews all right so how do we create the rest of this right so the first thing we want to do is i want to create a list of reviews and i want to create that list based on whatever the business was selected here and also any particular uh filters that they may have set if we want only reviews after a certain date or before a certain date or above a certain rating or below a certain rating i want to be able to filter those out and i want to be able to have dynamic rates that means this is going to say both not replied or replied here right so if i knew not replied it's going to show only those two it's going to show replied it's going to show just the one that's been replied or but i but this particular drop down list is going to be dynamic because if i decide to show ratings above i want to show those ratings above one two three or four star i want that dynamic that data validation to change if the ratings are below i want that to show five four three two or two right so i want them to be dynamic right i only want to show ratings below four stars right so that's how we're going to do it here and so they only have one rating below four star so how do we get that dynamic filter well let's take a quick look inside back inside our reviews database and take a look at some of the filters that we've set up so we've got some criteria that's going to help us we've got a date criteria because we'll be filtering based on certain dates we have a rating criteria and we have a reply criteria right has it been replied to or not so that's going to help us the dynamic criteria so we can either have this goes criteria this is our criteria or this is a criteria okay so how do we do that well we've got several different options right we've got uh several different we've got five different options show replies review after review before ratings and those options could have different uh dynamic data validation so let's take a look inside the admin go down over here there it is right there i want to do show replies right the show replies is going to have this not replied replied or both the ratings above is going to have one star, two star, three star, four star, and the ratings below is going to have this. So if the user chooses any of these three of the five, if they choose one of the date options, there's nothing, they can just enter the date. But if they choose one of these three options here, we're going to call that filter by, that's a name called filter by here. So if they choose one of these three options, I want to show this or this or this, and that means a change event. So that means the change event. If there's a change to this particular event, reviewed after of course that's going to show nothing just they can put in the date or ratings above i want to show the drop down list on the change of d3 so let's take a look inside the code on that specific change event and see how we are going to do that so we're going to go back into the code this time we're going to go directly inside the review sheet the review sheet here and this is where our worksheet change event is going to take place and of course it is with the change of that d3 d3 is the cell that we're focused on when we make a change so if there is a change to that cell and we want to make sure the contents of that cell are not empty then we can do the following i'm going to dimension the filter type as long i want to know which one and we also have that filter type set in b3 so let's take a look inside b3 and we're going to take a look inside we're running a match and i'm going to do filter by remember one of those three filter bys now if i choose one of the date fields reviewed after that filter type is going to be zero because the date here reviewed before is not here it's not show replies ratings above or rating below it's not within this range called filter by and that's fine it's zero however if i select one of those other options one two or three show replies would be one ratings above would be two and ratings below would be three why is that because it's the matching the first one or the second one or the third one inside this specific range if it is one of those then i want to define this particular named range now i've got some named range that are set up by this that are going to help us here if we take a look at these three cells we're going to call that filter one we see that's called filter one this particular one is called filter two i've already set the named ranges for that 
and this one is called filter three, right? So if we know filter one, filter two, and filter three. So if we know that this is three, we can set this to filter three, right? We know it's filter three. So we can do that inside the code. All I need to do is extract this number as the filter type into from B3 into a variable. So that particular is exactly what we're gonna do. That filter type here is gonna be B3. Then what we want to do is no matter what we do, we want to make sure we first delete the validation. We can never add another validation on top of an existing validation. So we just want to delete the validation inside E3. So E3, the validation is going to get deleted. If it is either one of the data options, we will not be adding any new validation on top of that. So we also want to clear the contents, clear any of the contents. Now, of course, when we're dealing with a merge cell, we must clear both of the cells within a merge cell or all of the cells within a merge cell. So we need to clear the existing values. We certainly remember if it's a date type, this is going to be zero. Filter type is going to be zero if it's either one of the date options. So if filter type does not equal zero, then we want to set the validation. That validation is we're going to add a brand new validation. It's going to be a list type of validation. If it's if they choose user choose an incorrect value, we want it to stop. And I want to set a formula. Now that formula is going to be the word filter and the filter type, meaning one, two, or three. This is exactly the same as our named ranges that we've already created right up here. Filter one, filter two, and filter three, right? So that's a very easy way to dynamically create three different data validations in just one line of code. Well, if you combine these, it's more, but one line of code will be able to create the data validation, three different types of data validation using this variable right here, which is gonna be one, two, or three. That's gonna create our validation here. And then all we're gonna do is select E3. That's gonna allow the user to automatically select it. So that means when I change this, it's automatically going to select that cell and allow the user to do that. Now, when we make a change for this particular E3, that is when we wanna load that list. So that is the next macro that we're going to go over. When we make a change to E3 on filter change, right? I wanna make sure that D3 is not empty. Certainly, we need a value inside D3 to make sure. And I also wanna make sure that we have a business, of course. Then what we want to do, we also want to make sure, and E3 does not equal empty, meaning they also have to have a value here too, right? We can't have anything on that left blank. If both of those are correct, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a macro called review list refresh. That is the macro that we're gonna go in right now called review list refresh. So when we go inside the review macros, the module here, the top one is called review list refresh. This is the first macro that we're gonna go over inside this module. We have some dimension variables, last row, the last results row, the criteria column, the criteria row as long, the review row, and the review column. We'll be going over those into detail. I also wanna know the rating as shape and the review list. As we notice, we have the shapes, right? So we're gonna have some shapes here. See, this is the rating of two if I select it, right? But if I select, let's take another look here and let's go ratings uh, f below five star, we got one. Or we can select if we wanna show replies and then we could show all, both replies, that's gonna show all of them. So we notice that we've got some shapes here. And when we select it, we'll be going over that in the middle. So I've got some shapes that I'm gonna need to define here. We want the criteria as a string and the rating number as a string. So the first thing what we do when we want to re refresh the list is I want to clear all the contents of the existing cells. Now I'm going to be clearing also including column C because C is actually going to take our review ID. If we see it there, it's been hidden, right? That is in column C. Now the reason you can't see it even when we expand it is because I've given it some very specific uh, condi some formatting, not conditional formatting, some very specific formatting using three particular semicolons. And we look in the custom custom here and we see that we have three semicolons. If I do one, two, three, that is gonna automatically give it, if we have, of course, numerical, we just use one, but three here is gonna, for these, will automatically hide that. And that's what I've done here. So three semicolons will hide whatever you want in here. So it's gonna be hidden. We don't have to worry about that. Very, very good. So now that we understand we have, we wanna make sure we're clearing out including C because that ID for that particular review is gonna be located here in column C. We also wanna clear out all the way to F and then all the way down. So we also wanna clear out the selected row. That selected row is in B5. When I make a selection, I wanna load that review on the right side. I want conditional formatting to trigger. That particular row is located inside B5. I want that cleared out too. Okay, as we move down, right, I wanna set that criteria based on whatever's in D3. D3, I wanna put that into a variable. So D3 
is correct right here. I want to make sure that I know whether we're showing the replies. That's going to help us determine. I need to know that. Why do I need to know that? Because I need to know what criteria to use. Am I going to use this criteria, this criteria, or this criteria? I've got three different criteria that we're using based on whether it's date, a rating, or reply here. So I want to use the criteria, and I need to know that. I'm going to put that into a variable right here called criteria. And then what we're going to be doing is I want to clear all the previous results. This is going to be based now on the review database. So we want to clear all the previous results. Whoops. I want to clear the previous results are going to be located directly inside here. So everything from V3 all the way through AA. We're going to use some formulas here that are going to help us. So from V through A and clearing all the way down. So I'm going to clear any prior results. I want to determine the last row of that database and making sure that if it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub. Now what I want to do is I want to get the, I want to determine the criteria. I need to know, remember, I need to know what columns to use here. Very, very important. Am I going to use these columns here, this column, or this column, right? So basically date and time. So what column is this? If I look this, we see that this is column 15, this is column 17, this is column 19, okay? So that's what I want to use. So if it's a date criteria, we're going to use that criteria 15 minus the previous, also the previous column, because I want that business, 17 or 19, okay? So we know that if the select case, the criteria, if it's reviewed after or reviewed before, reviewed after or reviewed before, we know that that's a date criteria. So we're going to set that column as to 15. We know it's a date criteria. So that criteria column is going to be 15, and the criteria row is going to be 3. That criteria row is 3. The reason we have a criteria row, because this is 3, this is 3, this is 4, right? So I need to know if it's 4. Great. So what if the ratings are above or the ratings are below? That's a rating criteria. We're going to set that rating as the criteria column as 17 and we're going to also set the criteria row as three and then what if it's show replies right if we're inside here and we want to show the replies i want to know that that's going to be criteria 19 but i also want to know if it's not replied or replied or if it's both that's going to make a difference here right so why is that important well let's take a look back inside the code if the case is show reply we're going to set that criteria column to 19 right this is 19 right i want that 19 plus the minus one so 19 but i also want to know what row is it is it going to be four or three now if we're equal we've got a formula in here that's going to help us right we've got a formula in here that's going to help us if it's reviewed after right after don't worry about this both because when we have a proper date here let's take a look inside the date. you'll see that that changed reviewed after let's just say uh five one right so when we take a look back in here we see that the date is now linked to a proper date and that's exactly what we want we want the number format so we know if it's reviewed after it's going to be greater than and whatever the user put in whatever the date or if it's otherwise, it's going to be less than and then reviewed after. So that's how we can determine right. So if I decide that we want before this specific date, right, before, and then we change it back to 5-1, it's probably going to be no data there, right, which is fine. So, oh, there's one single data there. And so we can see back here, now it says less than, less than, okay? So that's how we get the date and time. But what about the rating? The rating here, again, let's take a look. Again, look at the data. It's linked to the same cell, so don't worry about this because as soon as we change it to a rating, right, ratings before ratings above let's take a look at this ratings above we want to know ratings above let's say two star right so i want all the ratings here so let's look back in this it's greater than two so how are we going to do that well we're going to take a look if review equals ratings above i want greater than reviews and before well, what's before otherwise less than before well i don't understand what's before the reason is I want the user to see, I don't want the user to see numbers, one, two, three, or four. I want them to see one, two, three, or four star, right? I want the full sentence, right? But however, if we take a look inside our database, our actual data is just numbers, right? So we need to, I need to differentiate between when the user says five star, it means five. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's take a look inside here. And we're going to take a look inside right here, this particular one, this rating right here in B4. So let's take a look inside B4. 
If I know this is two star, all I need to do is remove the word star and the space before from that, right? So I'm going to substitute whatever's in E3 when removing space and then star. What that's going to do is going to leave us with just the number. So if I change this to three star, this is going to change to just the three. So it is this three that we want to use inside the filter, whatever's in B4. So that is why when we running a filter, that is why we can say greater than three because we're using what's in B4, greater than B4 or less than B4. This way we have the proper filter based on that. However, the user sees more of a user friendly word like this, one, two, three, or four stars. So that's going to be, that's just an easy way of basically extracting the number from that string. Great. So that's how we get the reviews. But how about the business now, the reply? What about the reply criteria? Well, the reply criteria, let's move ahead to that and change that above. So if we want specific replies, if I want to know show replies, and this is going to be based on not replied, only those that are not replied, or let's choose a different one that we have replies on. Let's try this burger door. Okay, good. I like that there. So we, we've only replied. We've not replied on one. We've replied on two. And if we show both, we see that they're both replied. Two have replies. One does not have replies. So here's what I want to do. If I want to show both, I want to show both equals empty and does not equal empty. I want to show both of those, right? However, so in this case, both would be both rows three and four to include inside the criteria. So this criteria would be R3 through S4. However, if we're showing just one, let's take a look at just one. If I only want to show just a single, let's say not replied, I only want to use this one equals empty equals empty. The reply would be empty, right? If there's no reply, that means not replied. However, if they have replied, replied, right? I only want to show anything that's not empty. So the formula in here will take it. If E3 equals replied, then show does not equal. Otherwise, show empty. So we need to differentiate or both. If it's both, I want to show both of those here, right? So when I go to admin, right? Here, when I show both, I want to use both these criteria, three and four. So that's what we're going to do inside the code. If reviews E3 equals both, then the criteria row equals four. Otherwise, the criteria row equals three. So we're differentiating between them. Once we have all of our criteria columns and our criteria rows set up, we can then run our advanced filter. And that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to take that original data from A3 and all the way through H. We don't need more than that. Just the reply is the last one. We don't need the row. And we're going to run advanced filter. That criteria is going to be dynamic. So we're using cells in this case, not the range. We're going to start that range off in the cells. Row two, right? It's always going to be row two is going to be our starting. And the column's always going to be the, the column that we said 15 minus one, because I want to include that business ID, including the business, which is in E2. Whatever business is in E2, that's the one we're going to use. So it's going to be the column minus one. That's the first cell in our range, the column minus one. And then we have the second column in our range. We're going to separate that by a comma. The second column is going to be that criteria row three or four and the criteria column. That's our dynamic criteria. So we can have that regardless of the type of criteria. And then regardless, of course, it's going to be copied to the correct row. We're going to copy that all the way from V through Y. And then what I would do is I want to convert the ratings to the string ratings, and I want to have that reply to a checkbox. So we're going to use a formula for that. So the here we go. Here's the, the results are going to come from to V2 through Y2. Okay, then we're going to determine the last row of the results based on column X. X is the review ID that's required. So we're going to make sure that that is going to be the one that we use our last row on. Okay, if the last row is less than three, that means we have no data. We can exit the sub out. But now if we do have data, I also want to bring, if we take a look inside our reviews here, I have the review ID here in column C, which is hidden. I have the review DOM, which is the date. I have the rating. I want to show the rating five star, four star, two star. I don't want to show five, two, or three. And I also want to show a check box. So this means we got to convert this data, right? This Our data is five, four, or three. I want to convert it to the star. Our data here is it's some text. I don't want that all that text. I just want to show a checkbox. So what we're going to be doing is using a formula to help us out with that. So here's the formula. The formulas are going to sit up here. Then all I need to do is determine the last row and bring those formulas down. So the first formula is simple. If W3, W meaning th three does not equal empty, then W3, the star, and a space and the star. So we're just converting it to a text and then bringing it down. 
Also, relatively simple, if v3 does not equal mp, we're going to use character 252. Character 252 is that umlet. And when we change the font, of course, to change the font to wingdings, that's automatically going to change it to that checkbox. So all I need to do is just type in wingdings here, and then we're going to change that changes it to the checkbox right there. Okay. So that's how you see it. in the wingdings font, this is a checkbox. So I want to bring this down, but only when there is a reply, right? Only when there's a reply. Here's the reply. We don't need to show the reply. We don't need to show the rating. So these are off to the left, right? This way I can bring in all these information, these four columns exactly once. The ones I don't want to show are on the left. The ones I do want to show are on the right. So the reply, if V3, of course, is empty, we are going to show. So I'm bringing those formulas down V5. And if it's empty, we're just going to show nothing. That way, when I have all the data, I can then just take this data and bring it directly over inside our reviews here. And that's exactly what I did in the last line of code here. So once we bring our formulas down right here, Z3 through AA in the last results row, formula equals whatever formula is located in Z1 through AA1. That's inside our database. Once I have that, all I need to do is C6, remember calling C6, through F in the last results row plus three. Our results start on row six here. Of course, our results start on row three here, so we need to compensate for that. Three would be the difference on that. Okay, and then x that's going to bring over all of our review data. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to know if this particular review, I want to look inside the selected review. We have a selected, our selected review ID is here. When I change this, we haven't got to that code yet, but when I change this, this particular review ID is going to be selected. And that basically just means whatever review is located here in column C, I'm going to take that review and I'll place it directly inside B6. So what I want to do is if I refresh this list, right, if I, we see the selected row is row eight. If I delete that, that conditional formatting is going to be gone. What I want to do is when I refresh this list, I want to look inside this column. If that review ID is found, I want to take whatever row it's been found, eight, and I want to place that eight directly inside here, inside B5, because that's going to trigger the conditional formatting. So basically what I want to do is if we have a specific a review already selected here, I want to make sure to show that row selected even after we clear that selected row. So we can do that with this. If the selected row, set the select row if it's applicable. If B6 does not equal empty, right, making sure that it's not empty, I want to make sure that we actually have a review ID here. If it's not empty, what I want to do is I want to move in then and I want to just check to see if it is. So we're going to wrap it in on air resume next and on air resume. Anytime we use the find command, we want to make sure to wrap that around. So I want to take whatever inside B5, I want to put whatever row has been found if it is found inside b5 so to find it we're going to look inside the reviews we're going to look in column c remember that's where it's going to be found starting in c6 and going all the way down i'm going to look for whatever's located in b6 if it is found i want to return the row and i want to place that row directly inside b5 that will automatically trigger the conditional formatting if we highlight these rows we go into home Conditional formatting, manage rules, we see we have three different rules. This one, B5, is based on selected row. This one, the, the light pink, is based on odd rows, making sure there's a value in column D. This one's a little bit lighter, also for even rows, and making sure that there's a value in column D in the same row. That is it. Those are the three conditional formattings that we have there. Great. So we saw that. Now we also, so that's how we load the list. But now when we make a selection, I want to take the information in that review, and I want to load these fields up with it. How are we going to do that? Well, that's going to be on selection change. When I make a selection change, if there's nothing there, I don't want anything to happen. But if I make a selection change here, I want something to happen because there's a value here. And of course, that's going to be on selection change events. So we go, go into the reviews here. That's the sheet where we're making the selection change event here. If, we, if the user selects more than one cell, we're going to exit the sub out. If the user makes a selection based on columns D6 all the way through F, and I want to make sure C contains a value, it's hidden, but it does contain a value, that is the review ID. If that is not empty, then we want to do a few things. The first thing what I want to do is I want to set that particular review ID. Set review ID in B6. And I also want to set the target row. Set selected row. So this next line in B5 is going to trigger that conditional formatting. This will put that particular ID in B6. And then I want to run a macro called review load. Review load, that's the next macro that we're going to go into. And basically all we need to do here inside the review, here called review load. 
what I want to do very, very easy, I want to clear all the associated fields out, clearing all those fields out. But first, I want to make sure that we don't have any reviews, right? This particular is of shape based on the rating, right? As we change it, you'll see that that shape changes to rating two, rating five. So how do we create that? Well, we've got some ratings here, all the way here, individual ratings here. You may have seen this before in another training. So each one of these shapes is based on a rating number. So we can convert that rating number into an actual shape. So, to, but I want to make sure that we are going to remove any of those first. The name of this is called Review Rating 5, REV Rating 5. So I want to make sure that we're going to remove anything that contains Review Rating. Notice our samples don't contain that. Our samples contain Rating 5, Rating 5, not the word, not the letters REV. So I only want to look in our entire sheet, focus on the rating shape in our entire sheet shapes inside this reviews. And I want to look inside every single shape. I want to loop through every single shape in that. E using the in string command based on the name of that shape. If it contains REV rating, that means greater than zero, meaning the name of the shape does contain that text, then we're going to delete it, right? We're only using that when we display it. So that's all we need to do. That's just going to make sure that we delete any particular rating here that's automatically deleted. Continuing on, I want to clear all the contents of all the fields. That's going to clear it out. Then I want to make sure that B7 contains a value. B7 is the row. If we take a look inside B7, we're going to use the match combine. We're going to take a look inside B6. We're looking for this particular ID. We're going to use the match based on that, based on the review ID. We're going to add three to extract the row. If there's an error, it's going to be zero or empty, I should say. It's going to be empty, so I want to make sure that we have a row. This is the row that's associated inside our database, row 11, of that particular row using the match, so we know what data to load. And how do we know where to put that data? We're going to use data mapping to do that. That means our link is going to go in I6, our text is going to go in I8, and our rating is going to go into B8. So we're going to bring that down here. So that means I6 is going to take on our link here, we're going to put that review directly in I8. We're going to put the uh, reply in I15 if it's contained. And we're going to put that rating directly inside B8 here. Great. So we're going to loop through that. So that's what we're going to be doing. So that's why we have data mapping all up here. These particular columns are mapped to the cells located here. All right. So all we need to do is make sure that B7 contains a value, right? It has to have a row. If it doesn't, we're going to exit the sub out. We're going to put that row into a variable called review row. This is our review review row for the database. Okay. And then what we're going to loop, I want to loop all the way from two to eight, starting here in column B, we've already got the review ID in there. So we don't need that starting in column two, going all the way to column eight. Here's column eight and H. I want to loop all the way through that. And basically, whatever we is found in this column, in this row, place it directly in this cell, this cell located in review. It's going to place it directly inside here. So we can do that with these three lines of code. So that means that particular range that is found in row one, we're going to place it directly in here. And what are we going to place there? We're going to place whatever has been found on the row and the column of our database. All right, now what I want to do is I want to create the rating number. We know that rating number just got placed into B8. We know it's here, right? Because it's been mapped directly from that. We know our ratings in B8. Our rating is going to get placed. So what I want to do is I want to look at this rating and I want to create a shape, right? I want to, I want to duplicate this shape, whatever shape it is. Let's say if it's rating three, right? Rating, let's say it's four. If it's four, I want to duplicate rating four and I want to create a very specific shape here, duplicating that, and call it rating 5. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. That rating number is located here. It's a value here. And then what we're going to do is we also want to hyperlink here. I want to make sure that we're going to hyperlink. That allows the user to automatically click there and go in directly to that review as we saw. So I want to make sure that I6 contains that hyperlink. So we can do it here. Range I6 hyperlinks. We're going to add it here. It's not always automatic. And what do we want to link? The text is going to be, we want to link to whatever's in I6, right? That's the link that we want. And I want to make sure that it's automatically the value of I6. This is the range we're adding. This is the link value. And then this is the notes that select to view. That's that help text. When we select over here, we see it says select to view review. So we give the user a little bit. So we've got that that automatically hyperlinks it. Now we're going to focus on the shapes. So the rating and the rating number. Remember, we've got samples. I've got rating one, I've got rating two, I've got rating three. So whatever the rating is, or if it's 4.5, that would be fine too, 2.5, 1.5 in case we have halves. We can do that too. So I want to duplicate that shape, and I want to give it a very specific name. We're going to duplicate it here. 
we're going to give it a very specific name using REV rating and the rating number. Okay, and then of course with the shapes rating, what I'm going to do is I want to position it. What do I want to position? I want to position it directly on K4, the left position of K4 and the top position. And I want to make sure it's visible. Although when we duplicate it, it almost always is vertical. All right, it's always it's almost always viewable when we duplicate it. So this might not be necessary. Great. So we've created this rating. That's it. That's all we need to load this shape, right? But we do want to be able to save a reply, right? If I click here and we create a reply, and I put thanks so much, right? I want to make sure to be able to save that reply. Relatively easy. Reply save, right? So if I decide to load this up again, and we see that it's been replied, and then we see that that reply has been saved. I want to make sure to save that reply, and I'm going to save it directly inside this column, column H. So that's relatively easy here. Just few lines of code. With reviews, we want to make sure there's a row associated with it. If there's not in B7, let the user know to please select a review in order to reply, right? If B7 is empty, there's no row that's associated with that review. That review is right, that row is here. There's no row. We need to know what row, row 12, right? Where are we going to save that, that reply? Have to have that row. Okay, if we're going to extract that row, put it into a variable called B7. This is our review row. And I also want to then, it's very, very simple. I just was only saving one. So the review database, column H, is simply equal to what's in I15. We're going to save the review and then just let the user know with the message box the, the review reply has been saved. Okay, so that's it automatically. That way, when we make a re reply online, we can then copy and paste it directly inside here and then save it automatically inside here so we can know that it's been replied to. Okay, that's it for the save reply. Everything else has to do with the dashboard. I've got this really cool dashboard here. And just a mini, I've created a little bit of a picture here. And we've got some particular, just a few different items that are going to help us out. We've got a bar chart, bar graph, and just things so that we can see what kind of ratings based on the selected company are based on uh, selected. So we can also add it company here and I've got a little bit of a slicer. So to do that I've created a table. Of course there's a table if we take a look into this we see it's called review database and it's based on all the content. And if we slide over here we've created just inside this sheet I've created a couple pivot charts here and I want to know the ratings by business. If I want to know the ratings by business we can show the field list here and I want to know which ratings were said what is the average rating by business so to do that I'm going to take the business nickname we're going to use it this is we're going to come in handy I'm going to drag it down here that business nickname will then to be displayed in this first column I also want to know the ratings so I've taken the ratings and I want to know the average of it I don't want to sum it or I don't want to calculate it so we click on the value scene we see that we have the average right click and go in the value right click sorry it was off the screen and we see that's the average values okay so we can then I want to take that and I want to place it directly in here so I want to show that by average view rating so I've created this little bar chart and I've given it a little background picture I've got this picture saved up of all these little stars so the fill here is a specific picture right so if we take a look here and we of course format the data point here we can see that it's been a fill so if I want to fill this is going to be picture or text fill and we see that we've created a little bit of a picture from a file to give it that little star so I've created this background button this little star here and of course I'll include that for our patreon members to make sure that we have that so this little bar is going to do that right there so very very simply created this bar chart to do that now if you want to create a bar chart right all we would do is insert here and then insert right if we want a bar chart here just insert that bar chart and then of course we can give it a background right if we want a picture or text fill that would be it something like that basically and then customize it accordingly that's kind of relatively simple and then also we want to know the count by reviews right I want to know the call the count of the ratings how many five stars how many four stars right so to do that that's relatively easy also in this particular field list I want to know the ratings but this time we're going to use the count of the ratings counting of the ratings and we can have those count of the ratings inside here which ones are four star which ones are five star but now remember our data our data contains only one two three or four or five so how do we get it to show the star if we take a look inside our reviews here we see that we have here in this particular chart here we see four star three five star three however our data only contains the numbers so how do we get that there we can use that through formatting so if I scroll up here and I and I right click and I go into the field settings here 
And then we're going to click number format, right? And I've given it a very specific number format. I'm going to take that number and I'm going to add a zero, then a space, then the word star. That's a custom, right? So basically in this case, this is how we can actually change the formatting of it to add the star. But in actuality, if we select on it, we see that only four, right? It's only four. But the formatting, we're using the formatting, a custom formatting to display the word star. Very unique way to show the data. And we can show that we now have 10 five stars, four five stars. And we can also put this into a chart. So we've got a, a stacked bar chart here, simply by inserting here. We got to insert this particular one here. And we've given this particular 2D column chart here. And then, of course, add some colors here. And we can customize that. And that's all we've done here. So just, and then of course, we've added data labels onto that. So by adding the data labels here, adding those data labels, we can add the data labels and then we customize them accordingly, basically showing the labels. So that's how we were able to do that relatively easy. And then also we have this basic bar chart here. This particular one's going to come directly from ratings by business. Well, we went over that one. Sorry, here. The, this particular one, the row labels. I want to know the count, how many ratings on a per business basis. Again, we've used this. This time we're counting the ratings. And we've created just a little bit of a bar chart here under reviews with a fade out. That's pretty much it. And then, of course, I've decided to add a slider here so we can add this slider and customize it so that if we wanted just one business or two businesses, we could easily hold the control down and select multiple business by adding the slicer. Did I say slider? I think it said slider. <laughs> slider. All right, slicer. I was thinking about food or baseball. So a slicer here. We can add this slicer inside. Enter slicer very, very easily, right? We can do that. Just inside the pivot chart, we can simply add the slicer here, insert the slicer here, and we want to decide to add, we are going to add the business, this one I'm using the business nickname, clicking OK here, would add it, in this case, I want to do a slicer, but I'm going to add additional columns, I want to add five columns here, so we put in the five, I think I put five here, five columns here, and then just spread it out accordingly, we've got a little bit of a custom design here. So that's pretty much how we did the slicer. And of course, if we don't want to show that header, we can go into the slicer settings. Sorry, it's off the screen. Right click, slicer settings, and display header and unselect that. And that's going to be able to, that's how we create this really cool slicer that's going to allow us to select one or multiple businesses. And we can delete that. We don't need two slicers. So great. So that's how we do it and created this really, really cool amazing review so we can automatically pull reviews now you may want to pull reviews from other platforms it can get a little bit tricky certainly pulling yelp was definitely the easiest so we went with that for the training google of course reviews allows us we'll have to connect your google account and then for the other platforms we can use google business facebook or Trustpilot. both of them, each one of the apis is slightly different and a little bit more trickier yelp was easier so we went with that all right, well, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible review manager. If you'd like to support this channel, there's so many ways you can do that. If you like this template, in fact, I've got 250 of my best templates all wrapped up into a single zip file. And I'm also going to include an optional PDF codebook. If you want that, that's another option. Inside that, that would really help us out. I will include the links down in the description for that. And that'll be my best templates. I hope you'll grab that. Thank you for your continued support. We'll be moving to every other week very soon. Thank you so much, and we'll see you.